I've been using Copilot on my channel for a while now and it works pretty good, but recently I've been trying to branch out and try some other tools that people have mentioned. I've tried Super Maven, it works really fast, and I switched over from Copilot to Super Maven. Um, but then people kept talking about Cursor AI and they kept, kept talking about it. I'm like, okay, let's try out Cursor AI. And I tried this out like a couple months ago and I'm like, eh, it just feels like another thing, right? It just didn't feel that useful. But then I did a live stream and I spent like an hour playing with it. And then I did a post on Twitter saying front end developers are officially cooked. And this is racking up a lot of views. Um, and from these comments, a lot of people are denying that this is actually something that's useful. Basically, I told it to take a page that I had and make it responsive. And the results were actually pretty good. And since the results are pretty good, what I did was I went to my starter kit. I do have an issue here saying make everything responsive. And I just haven't had time to do it. Um, so I decided, you know what, let's try doing this with cursor. And I basically went through every single page. And I just typed in one sentence, make this page responsive or make this component responsive. And here are all the files that cursor and Claude changed for me. And you can see like it just basically added a bunch of Tailwind classes. And again, if you're a front end engineer who's really good at Tailwind, you might be like, oh, this, this is silly. But this actually saved me probably hours of work. I didn't have to do much work at all. Every single page now, fully responsive. It looks nice, looks good enough. And just in case you're not convinced that this is actually like useful, um, even though like within one hour playing with it, I canceled my GitHub Copilot subscription and I subscribed to Cursor because this is actually phenomenal. And this isn't even a paid video. I wish they would pay me for this video because I know it's going to get views. But I'm just making this because I'm actually blown away with how cool this is. So let's go over to my project. I have the project loaded up over here. All right, and we're going to go and I'm going to do a command shift I. This is something called a composer view in cursor, which is relatively new. And I didn't know about it. I tried cursor a while back. They didn't have this. Now they do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type some changes I want made to my code base. So I'm going to say on the profile settings page, can you please add a tab called YOLO? When a user clicks this tab, I want you to show a panel that has a configuration panel with a single button in it called Rick James B. When a user clicks on this button, I want you to show a confirmation dialog. And after they confirm, please loop over every single group they are associated with. Create a post inside of that group with a message of I'm Mike Jones. Here's the prompt. Let me just move this up a little bit. You'll see at the bottom, there is a button over here that says run over my code base, right? I can do a command shift enter. I'm just going to go ahead and click this. And this is going to actually scan over my whole code base. It's basically adding all my files to vectors, like it's doing vector searches over my files. And it found a bunch of files that seem relevant to my request. And this is going to basically generate changes in all those different files. If it needs to create a new file, it'll just create it for me. And then I have the power to go through here and review the code changes and make sure that the things that it did seem correct. It seems accurate. OK, and so now it's fully done. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to accept all. And then I'm going to save all like I'm not even going to test this code, but I could go through here one by one and see like what what it changed. So like the tab section, it added a tab. On this, it added a page with a button. Okay, over here, it added a Rick James button that does something that shows an alert, a toast on success, a toast on error, and then an actions. It actually made a server action, so like a backend server action that gets all the groups related to my user, and it creates a post in that. Now, if I wanted to modify this, I could say, you know, inside the actions file, make this a promise all instead of a for loop. Well, let's just jump to this, and I'm going to go here. We have a YOLO tab now. We got a button that says Rick James B. I click it. Look at this. I got a dialog. I'm going to say I am ready. That shows a loader for me. I think it, there's a little bug here. It did mess up a little bit. Uh, let's try it again and kick it off. And uh, now let's go to our groups. Let's go to manage this group over here. And then we're going to look at our posts and view. There we go. We got a post. To me, I've been coding for 10 years. This is game changing. This is phenomenal. Now, granted, is this going to replace your job? Probably not. But at the same time, like, I don't think I've ever used a tool. And sorry, I'm late to the party with using cursor. I haven't used a tool that's this powerful. And this actually kind of just blew my mind a little bit. 
You might say, well, if you look through the code, I mean, this isn't really complicated code. It's really not. All it's doing is looking at other places in my code base, taking examples and using them to generate new code that works with my current pattern, right? Typically a code base, when you start off, you have to like figure stuff out. But once it hits a certain threshold, your code base has a bunch of patterns in place and it becomes a lot of copying, pasting patterns across your code base. And this actually implemented that whole feature in how long did it take? Maybe it was like 20 seconds. And then I had to fix one minor bug that TypeScript uh, helped point out. So I don't know. I just wanted to demo that because I thought this is actually pretty cool. And I didn't want to just show a really basic example of making a page responsive. So before I wrap up the video, I do want to share some cool things that Cursor has that I have found. So this is the composer view, but you can actually just highlight some code and edit it in line if you want to. So for example, I could change whatever I want here. And that's how I kind of did the responsiveness. I just highlight everything and say, make the entire page responsive. Another thing you can do is you can highlight code and do a command L and that is going to allow you to chat over a snippet of code. Okay. And you can kind of do something similar with the composer I just showed. So I do want to share a couple of things that exist in cursor. So basically you can tag different files. So if I wanted to change like the landing page, I could tag the landing page and ask a question specific to that landing page, or you can actually point to a website if you want to. If you go over here, you can actually include docs. So like I can add a new doc file and then point it to a URL and it's going to fetch the docs and actually like index that when it's doing its code generation. Another thing I found very useful when using cursor is you can make a cursor rules file and you can actually put some context in here. So one thing I noticed is that the AI would sometimes give me like interfaces and I like to use types in TypeScript. So I said, never do TypeScript interfaces. Uh, I could say instead, always prefer, always use types. And then I said, keep prop types for React components in line. So another thing is like when I made a component, um, I would see that it would put like the props, like the, the types of the props up here. I like them in line. So these are some things you can kind of set up for your project. And it's going to read these when it generates code. So it knows like how to generate the code. Another thing you can do is you can actually just add a file. So this is like all of the convex docs. I put them in a single file, although I don't think I actually needed to do that. Um, since I've learned more about cursor since then. So it's just a bunch of context. And when you do the code generation, you can just go ahead and reference the AI context file like this, or you can reference certain files in your docs folder and the AI is going to use those when it's generating. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's all I wanted to demo with you all. I thought this was actually pretty phenomenal and I have never seen a tool like this. Maybe I'm late to the game. I should have tried cursor out and gave it a solid try back when it came out. I guess my final thoughts are try this out whether it's cursor or some other type of like integrated code experience cursor seems to be the best that I've tried and uh, don't don't get left behind because these are things that junior devs are going to pick up and start using and start becoming very very good at and they are going to run circles around senior devs who waste like three hours trying to make something responsive and a junior dev is going to come along and be like you know why are you not just using cursor to like make this responsive. Like, why are you wasting so much time? One thing I've noticed about senior engineers and like older developers is that they think that there's only one way to develop software. And they're like, they'll push, they'll be really reluctant to use new tools and new AI. And they don't realize how phenomenal this actually is. So keep that in mind. If you're a senior engineer, a mid dev engineer, I think every day you should be playing with AI tools to make sure that you are not replaced and that you are on top of your game because this is just going to get better over time. I think the AI tooling is just going to get better and better, and you're going to fall slowly behind if you don't stay on top of this stuff. All right, that is about it. Not trying to scare you all. I just want to inform you all that uh, you need to learn this stuff. Have a good day, and happy coding.